Victorum Gaming fans, we're back and fans of Victory at Sea. So today we're going to take a look at carriers, so definitely an, a key component of the game. We've uh, been covering aircraft um, in our little series here, and then this is going to be another part in that. So taking a look at how carriers function in the game. So starting off, um, the advent of the carrier was meant or meant that fleets no longer had to take uh, to the ocean without air support. This changed the whole basis of combat at sea, of course. So um, in one way, shape, or another, carrier's definitely going to be a big part of the game. Now, I'm sure you could definitely just go with gunboats for the most part and stuff like that, battleships, but um, and like some local air support, but um, carrier will definitely give you many, uh, or open up many more uh, tactical options for you. But there's uh, some things definitely to learn here. So first up, combat air patrol. Fleets with carriers often had a combat air patrol, known as CAP, flying perimeter around the fleet, looking for enemies, and unless the scenario you're playing states differently, you may start the game with two flights in the air from each carrier in your fleet. These flights may be placed anywhere in your deployment zone, or moved onto the table with your ships in the first turn as appropriate. Now, we don't have any stats for carriers yet, so we don't know how many uh, like total flights the different carriers will have, but um, being able to start with two in the air already is pretty nice. And then wind direction, um, which really doesn't matter for the rest of the game uh, for other craft because um, obviously everything's, um, uh, we're not relying on sail power anymore. So, but um, for launching and recovering craft, so ships of World War II had their own engines and were far removed from sail uh, where that was important. Um, so for most battles, the wind can be ignored, but if a fleet includes carriers, it becomes a great factor as carriers must sail into the wind um, in order to both launch and recover aircraft. As the ship's own motion increases in aircraft's airspeed when taking off and effectively reduces its ground speed when landing. Some uh, scenarios will specify the wind direction. For all other battles involving carriers, the wind direction will be random. So basically just roll a dice and look at the chart below and figure out where the wind direction is going to be. Um, then a carrier is said to be sailing into the wind if the table edge rolled for wind direction is within its front arc. So uh, that way that won't make that too tedious to get into the wind. And then launching and recovering aircraft. So ships with carrier may launch or recover, keyword or, not and, um, recover a single flight each turn during the movement phase. In order to do so, the ship must move in a straight line into the direction of the wind without turning and may not perform the evade order. So a couple restrictions there, definitely key to pay attention to. Um, launch flights are placed within one of uh, the carrier after the carrier's movement. The flights may not be moved further in this turn as they need to assemble into formation and then gain altitude. To be recovered, the flight model must move into base contact with the stern uh, or the back of the ship. Only flights that are listed as being usable by carriers may be launched or recovered. All other flights are considered to be land-based and can't be placed on the carrier. Carrier may not launch or recover flights if it has a crew area of critical score or two, which is really neat. Um, and again, uh, just shows how damage and damage control will be so vital. Um, because, yeah, like if the the crew area were just damaged too much, they're going to be too busy putting out fires on the deck, below deck, whatever. There, there won't be enough crew left to handle um, launching, recovering, and rearming, refueling aircraft. So really cool stuff. Fire was a major problem for carriers and greatly reduced their operational capabilities. So yeah, really good stuff there. And then refueling and rearming. So once a carrier has recovered a flight, it may replace any one-shot weapons that it's expended and get ready to send them up for another attack. Any number of flights may be rearmed during the end phase, but a separate crew quality check is required for each to be rearmed successfully and ready for launch the next turn. Flights that are not rearmed in one turn may try again in sub uh, subsequent turns. So um, definitely adds, again, a little bit of... Um, uh, uh, importance there to that and again uh, making sure that your damage levels aren't too high to prevent stuff like that so really um, really going to be key in using your carriers properly and of course making sure you get your rolls um, so that you can do that and uh, potentially passing that order where you can launch and recover two in a turn is definitely going to be uh, crucial It'll probably be the most common one by carriers I would imagine um, and then deep deployment uh, we've been talking about that briefly in other videos but here it is so carriers are not designed for frontline combat, operating far better when they um, are over the horizon and out of sight from enemy guns. Sending their aircraft to support the fleet, they can still fundamentally alter the course of the battle. Some scenarios allow carriers and fleets to be placed in deep deployment, keeping them off the table and far away from direct attack. In such a scenario, a player may choose to remove one or more of their carriers from the table before the game starts and place them into deep deployment. Any number of their flights may be placed on the table in the fleet's deployment zone, however.
And then enemy fly any flights kept on the carrier may be brought into battle during any turn within the game. When launched from the carrier, place the flight in contact with the fleet's table edge. And the flight can't be attacked in the turn and may, may move normally the next turn. So some definite advantages there for going deep deployment. And then, however, you can still be attacked, and we've covered that in a previous video. Um, but enemy flights moved off the carrier's fleet table edge um, may launch an attack on any carrier placed in deep deployment. The carrier may... Uh, dogfight attacking aircraft with any flights still on board their carriers. After they have been resolved, any, any surviving flights may launch attacks on the carriers. So, and of course, we, we again, we already talked about actually shooting guns at carriers, um, and uh, with that, uh, observation flights. So, these aircraft travel on board ships that have the aircraft trait and typically launched by catapults um, or on a gun turret. So, and again, this could be from uh, ships that are not carriers. Um, so a lot of the cruisers, for example, will have access to that. Before the game starts, each ship must assign each of their observation flights to one of two tasks, scouting or going beyond, uh, or guiding behind the horizon attacks. An observation flight is assigned to one task, cannot partake in another. And then the effect of the observation flights for beyond the horizon, we already talked about that in one of our earliest videos. Um, and then the effect of observation flights for scouting, we will actually cover in a separate video um, when we talk about deployment and missions. And, uh, of course, kamikazes will be part of the game, so, um, and just a little bit of a history on that there. So, and, uh, let's see, whether purpose-built or converted from existing aircraft, kamikazes were basically human missiles. Um, so, and again, yeah, basically, uh, Japanese Navy, although Italian, uh, Regia Marina, um, had some torpedo boats, basically, that would also achieve the same effect. But um, as far as rules, um, so the Imperial Japanese Navy features aircraft uh, with the kamikaze type, and um, the rules for them are here then. So a kamikaze attack is declared in the movement phase, the flight moving into contact with its target. Any AA battery fires resolved as normal, but any local fire does get a plus one bonus um, on the attack rolls, um, because basically, yeah, you're going to be dumping all your ammunition just to shoot the plane down. You don't really care about saving ammo um, when you have a kamikaze rolling in. After all AA battery fire has been resolved, the flight rolls to hit its target due to the accuracy of being piloted right up to the last moment, so any miss may be re-rolled, which will make these pretty nasty. All normal modifiers are applied except those for range, which are ignored. Damage is then applied as normal. And then the flight is removed from the table as a casualty regardless of what happens. Um, obviously there's no do-overs. Um, and then whenever a kamikaze causes damage to a ship, in addition to any other crits, caused, um, the ship's crew area will increase by one um, and apply those uh, things immediately. So, um, and yeah, so as long as you get some damage in, um, you're at least going to get uh, a critical, you're going to raise the crew area of a critical score by one. So, um, which if it's just from zero to one might not mean that much, but if you've already got some of that on that particular ship, um, that could potentially be very nasty, even if you don't do so, so much actual hull damage. So there's a brief bit on kamikazes and again aircraft carriers. So definitely going to be a very important part of the game and looking forward to actually getting some of the models. They look pretty damn gorgeous and of course the actual flight uh, stands as well. So and um, looking forward to seeing how they actually work uh, in real games. Uh, of course we're just talking about it right now. We don't actually have any in this demo kit. So um, we'll definitely be excited to feature them for the different um, factions that have access to them. So hope you guys enjoyed that little overview of carriers and observation flights and kamikazes. Uh, if you could, give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't already, and then stay tuned for more.